Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be replacing the vacuum pump on our 2015 Yukon Denali. Now, you may be able to do this without removing a lot of the exhaust manifold, the steering column, or some other pieces that we're going to remove, but I will give you that footage in case you want to do it that way to make it much easier. We will be replacing all three of our belts in this video as well, so I'll give you the item numbers here. These are the GM original equipment belts. We're going to start with a 10 millimeter socket and it helps on an extension like this. We're going after the negative battery terminal. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Some may say that this is not a necessary step, but um, this is a process I do just to make sure nothing electrical happens. So we're going to go ahead and come over to the air box now. Just have a flat screwdriver here. We're going to undo that clamp. We're going to come over here and you're going to push on the bottom of this tab to slide off this uh, little hose here and there's another one on the other side so just push down and slide those away we now are going to undo the throttle body here uh, at least just where the intake connects to the throttle body so another flathead screwdriver we're just removing that now we can just slide this entire air box off and out of the way okay next we're going to go ahead after the serpentine belt so a half inch breaker bar we're pushing down on the tensioner and then we're just taking the belt off. We're going to slide it through the pulley. Now we have a 24 millimeter socket so this is for going on the crankshaft and we're going to be able to uh, walk this belt off. This next one's the AC belt. It's a stretch belt so you pull on it and then as you rotate the crank we're walking it off. That's the way that you get this off if you want to keep the belt otherwise you cut the belt. We're using the same process for our vacuum pump over here on the right. We're just pulling on the belt as we turn the crankshaft and it walks it right off. Uh, an old O2 sensor harness worked great to pull on it. <laughs> so we went ahead and yanked that one off. Next we're looking at the steering shaft. We marked it with uh, the relationship here so we know to put it on exactly how it came off. And it just uses some 15 millimeter bolts. So we're taking two 15 millimeter wrenches here and going in opposite directions for the bottom one. So we're going to go ahead and remove that one and it comes out like this. Now we're doing the same with the top one. It has a, a locking bolt and once those are out we can slide it up off of the uh, steering rack and then down off of the steering column shaft. Now if you want to attempt taking it off now Skip to about five minutes into the video and take the four bolts out and the vacuum line that you'll see at five minutes or so into the video. If not, we're going to go a little farther right now just because I do have the footage for the exhaust manifold. Next, we're going to take off the heat shield bolt. So just 10 millimeter and there's three of these. One here, there's one back here, and finally there's also one a little bit lower on the heat shield down here. So just remove those three 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so there's also one for the dipstick tube for the oil. Now on these ignition leads, they're very simple to remove. You just pull straight down on them and they come off of the uh, coil pack like this. It's, uh, so you just got to kind of twist these and pull on them. And so uh, just be as careful as you can. The metal part is more of a heat shield that just spins. So it's not going to really do anything for you as far as trying to pull on the metal part so you're just kind of pinching on it, it itself on the rubber on the end so go ahead and twist it and that's uh, breaking it loose off of the spark plug and then it will pull out so uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, wiggle these out the best that we can okay and so they can be a little stubborn this one had uh, <laughs> the part come off now PB blaster you want to spray all of the exhaust manifold bolts I let mine soak overnight okay so once all these were up and out of the way now we can go after the exhaust manifold bolts and it's really nice there's only uh, five of them on each side down the center so we're just taking a ratcheting wrench here that was our uh, best tool to use for that once it's off we can slide our exhaust gaskets out Okay, from underneath the car, what we're going to do is take uh, some long extensions and remove uh, the three bolts that hold the exhaust manifold. So they're just nuts that come off and it just slides right off. 
so very easy. So we used a 15 millimeter um, shallow socket to get the right angle on that, but we also needed a deep socket on the passenger side. The studs are longer, so uh, with long extensions we got up in here and uh, we were able to get these off, but you can see there's three of them and this, these ones had studs, as you could see, that were a lot longer on the passenger side, so we did need to get up in there with the, the deep socket, and it worked out just fine. Next, on the vacuum pump, there's this hard line, so there's a clip that we're gonna remove here. You just spread the red tabs apart from each other, and as you do that, then the lock can slide down, and once it's slid down, you can just slide this right off of the vacuum pump. And then we're just using uh, 13 millimeters. There's four of these bolts that we're taking off, and then the entire pump will come off. Okay, so it's a little harder to get to these. So it's, there's also a little clip here that's holding a harness in, so we're just going to pop that out of the way. And uh, then, yeah, it's just four bolts. It comes straight off. As you can see here, you'll see it with it off here. So four bolts. One of the bolts tends to stay in place. And that's what it looks like here. So this is just another recommendation. I wanted to change this out because it had 100,000 miles on it. And Now we'll install our new vacuum pump. pump. And so this is the model number and everything. It was slightly different than what came off the car, so it might be an updated version. And this is a good thing to upgrade just because you have everything apart. And I have also heard that when these fail, they can put some metal shavings into the engine. So time for a new one. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of the blue uh, thread locker on these bolts. And uh, we're going to go ahead and thread them back in. Very simple on this one. There's just four bolts. So we're just going to mount it back up. We made sure that that metal gasket was on there. And uh, it came that way from the factory with extra new hardware. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and torque these down. There's just four of them, so two on each side, just the way that it came off. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll take off this little cap for our vacuum hose. And so, as you remember, as this goes on, it has a little lock on it. Be careful with the hose because it is a plastic one, so you don't want to crack it. So we're going to go ahead and push this on, and then we're going to put the clip up over it. There was also this harness little Christmas tree that we just put back into place. There was the ground that went right above this, so we're going to go ahead and install that now. We're going to go ahead and clean up our exhaust ports here. So we have our scotch pad and uh, just gently going and cleaning up around these ports. Make sure it's a nice clean mating surface. We're going to do the same on the exhaust manifold themselves. Here's our new exhaust gaskets here. So here's the part number for those. They are the same. They just need to be put on uh, exhaust manifold side, which would be the side yeah. facing outward. So we just want to make sure we put like those that. on towards the exhaust manifold. We got some new exhaust manifold bolts, so it's great to have new hardware. The old ones were pretty heat treated and rusted, so these look great. Now remember to put your dipstick tube through before you put this manifold in place. Uh, okay, so once it's on there, we're making sure the gasket is going through the bolts and then we're going to go ahead and torque it down on each side. As we're torquing this down, we're doing the inner bolts and then working our way to the outside bolts. Uh, the spec was uh, 17 to 20 foot-pounds, I believe, on this one, and in the right direction. Our steering shaft, we're going to go ahead and slide it back on here. We can see where our marks had lined up before, and we're going to slide it back over the bottom as well. Make sure you haven't turned the steering wheel or done anything uh, that would set this off. Now we're going to put in our two 15 millimeter bolts. This one has uh, the little captive bolt, so you can just tighten that one down. And uh, we're just using a ratcheting 15 and a regular 15. And then the bottom one is also two 15 millimeters. You can go ahead and tighten those down. Now we'll reinstall our heat shield. So just remember that the oil dipstick tube comes up here, and then the heat shield. It just goes on the exhaust manifold on those three spots, one down below, and then there's two of them up top. Once that's in, we're going to bring in our ignition lead here, just pop it straight back onto the spark plug, and uh, the ignition lead then comes up to the coil pack, and we just slide it straight back up on there. Make sure you don't forget this little flange. 
Okay, that flange goes on the exhaust manifold side. So uh, just make sure it's in place before you lift the exhaust into place, it can fall out. Okay, putting the exhaust back on. Passenger side, this is fixed, so it's best to line this side up first. Sometimes you gotta put your foot on the muffler and kind of push it back. Right here, it kind of gets hung up, so lift it up and push it back so you get your clearance. And uh, then over on this side, it's more of a collar one. So then when you're ready, you can move that one into place and they're 15 millimeter nuts to put back on. Okay, we have the nuts on here and they're still loose. They're just on. You wanna put these ones on too so that everything's just on. Don't tighten down one side and then the other or it'll be hard to line up. Then uh, basically just kind of put your chest right under here, push up against it and tighten these down. Just do it evenly. Next, we're gonna put on our stretch belts. So you wanna do this first one for the vacuum pump. It has to go on first or the other belts, <laughs> it won't go past them. So what we did is put a zip tie around the edge of it. And then as we rotate the crank, it will pull this stretch belt back onto place. Okay, ready? So as you see here, we'll go ahead and we're gonna turn the uh, crankshaft and just don't get your fingers or anything caught in this yeah. as you're turning it. As you can see, it's walking it right onto uh, the pulley there, and the zip tie is just holding it in place. So now as we rotate the crank, it will find its way onto that pulley. There we go. It's on. Okay, ready? Yep. Can't put the... Now you can also use the zip tie method on the crankshaft mm -hmm. pulley for the AC one, but I do have this tool that came with the belt. That's why if you go to GM, they charge you a lot for the... AC belt because it comes with the special tool. So check the video description. I'll put how I did it with the zip ties as well if you don't have this special tool. If you do have this special tool, you just basically set it on here. And as you turn the crankshaft, it just uh, goes around with it and walks it all the way on and then it comes out the other side. So watch the left-hand side on the AC compressor because as it's starting to stretch it on here, it likes to walk it off on the AC compressor. So you kind of got to be watching both at the same time. Again, don't get your fingers caught up into any of this. And then as you rotate this and they both uh, go on, that tool just comes out the bottom side. Daddy? Dad? Dad? Now if you don't have the special tool, you can put the belt on on the AC side and what we're going to do is wrap a bunch of zip ties around the crank pulley. You want to be careful though because the belt can do a figure eight and twist. So we want to be careful with this and so there's just a hole in the back of the pulley and we're just putting several zip ties. So as you can see, we're just going through that little hole there and more, the more zip ties the better on this one really. Uh, now that we have it tightened in place, we can just turn the crankshaft and it will help walk this onto uh, the crank pulley. Now make sure on the left hand side you can see that belt starts to come off. It likes to walk off, uh, so you almost have to put something like a uh, end of a wrench behind it uh, to help keep that belt where it is. So see how it's starting to twist? You got to be really careful with this and you know put some pressure down on here but not with your fingers <laughs> i put a little pry bar down in here just to help push down on it and uh, helped keep it so that it was going where it should then it started coming off of here right at the very end so i went back this way while kind of pulling gently here to line it back up so it didn't come off so just watch it as it's coming around, make sure that those zip ties are holding it, and then just cut them when you're done. Now we'll put on the main serpentine belts. We're going to start on the water pump, then we're going to go down under the crankshaft, and then we're going to basically have it go over the crankshaft, and this is where we're going to slide it behind the tensioner. Now we'll pull it till it goes over the alternator. This is where we're going to bring in our breaker bar. This is the half inch drive one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and push this in. And as we push down on it, that gives us our tension. And we can slide this right over our alternator.
Now we can bring our air box back in, and so we're just putting it in place and tightening it down on the worm clamps. We've got the one over here as well. We did not take out the mass airflow for this video, but I have to show you plugging this in or it's going to drive me crazy. So I'm just going to plug this back in. For our vacuum hoses, we just uh, push them from uh, behind here until they click into place. Have one on each side here. Now we'll reinstall the negative battery cable with our 10 millimeter socket. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Check the video description for my full playlist on this and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks guys.